Goats. Goats are among the easiest animals to raise. They do not need a big capital compared to other animals. They are popularly known as the poor man's cow because farmers who cannot afford to buy a carabore cow raise them as sources of fresh milk and meat. They can adjust to any climate. Goats can be sold for their meat, milk, or they can be sold alive. Here are some pointers for selecting goats to raise. First, imported goats are hard to find and are very expensive. Start with native and grade goats that are available in your locality or from the area with similar condition. Second, choose the large sized natives or grade does or a female goat. The weight should not be less than 25 kilos. Preferably, choose those that have been giving birth at least once a year. Third, check the other or milk bag. A good udder should be large, wide, and hanging with uniform large teats. The udder should be soft and yielding. Fourth, the lower front teat should be strong to assure good grazing ability. The fifth pointer for selecting goats to raise is, the eyes should be alert and the pupils well formed. Lastly, of some pointers for selecting goats to raise is, in goat breeding, it is necessary to use pure breed or cross breed back to upgrade the herd. Choose one that is tested to have successfully mated and at least one year old. And now let us explore the different breeds of goats. There are many different breeds of pet goats. Some people want large goats and some people want the small goats. Some prefer fluffy ears and others like them perky. But regardless of what characteristics you are looking for in a pet goat, there is no doubt that you have many options. The first breed of goats that we are going to tackle is native goats. They are the smallest breed of goats. They have horns and usually waddles. Their colors are brown, black, white, or a mixture of two colors. Their meat is called chevon. This is how it looks like. The second breed of goats is Anglo-Nubian. They are large goats with fine skin and glossy coat. Their ears are pendulous and their nose is distinctly Roman. They produce 2 to 3 liters of milk a day. This is how it looks like. The third breeds of goats is Sanen. They are the largest breed of Swiss breeds of goat. They are all white in color. They have long, lean body, well-developed breast, long neck and elongated, hornless head. Both the doe or the female and the back or the male goats are bearded. The back has tuft of hair hanging over his head. This is how it looks like. Lastly, for the breeds of goats is Togenberg. They are hardy and hornless. Their color varies from silver fawn to dark chocolate. They have markings of white stripes down their faces, around their eyes, and their legs are white. They have waddles and even female carry a bird. This is how it looks like. Cattle or cows for female and bulls for male are the most common type of large domesticated ungulates. 
They are prominent modern member of the subfamily Buvnae, are the most widespread species of the genus Bus, and are most commonly classified collectively as Bus torus. Here are some pointers in choosing cattle breeds to raise. The first pointers in choosing a cattle breeds to raise is Choose older cows, although they cost higher, feeding them would cost lesser than the younger ones. Younger cows will take a long time to feed. The second pointers in choosing cattle breeds to raise is Choose male cattle. They are easier and faster fatten than a female cattle. This is the quickest way on how to determine the gender of a cattle. Let's have a look. When determining if a male bovine is a bull or steer, there are two main places to look, underneath the belly and underneath the tail. Below is a look underneath the belly of a bovine. The presence of the shield let us know that this is a male. The additional presence of the testicles, which are contained in an external pouch called the scrotum, let us know that this is a bull. In some cases, depending on how and when a steer was castrated, there might be a small amount of the scrotum still visible. However, in these instances, it is a quite small and dried up looking, probably difficult to see, and does not resemble the large, healthy bull scrotum show here. Below is a look underneath the bell of a young calf. Remember, the word calf is a gender neutral and it is used to describe both males and females. We know by the presence of the sheath that it is a male, but since we cannot see between the hind legs to so know whether or not he has testicles, we can't tell if it is bull or steer. On the calf's this size the testicles, if present, would be contained in a comparatively small scrotum and would be more difficult to see than on a mature bull. Below is a look underneath the tail of a bovine. The presence of the anus without the additional presence of a vulva let us know this is a male. However, we cannot tell from this limited view if it is a bull or a steer. When determining if a bovine is a female, there are two main places to look, underneath the belly and underneath the tail. Cows look different underneath the belly when compared to bulls and steers. Instead of a scrotum if it is a bull or a sheath for both bulls and steers, cows have an other. Below is a look underneath the belly of a bovine. The presence of the other between the back legs let us know that this is a cow. This particular udder is plump and full looking because it is full of milk. An udder might be look less full than this or it might be even empty but it is still an udder. Let's take a look underneath the tail of a cow. Cows look different underneath the tail than bulls and steers. While cows, bulls and steers all have an anus, cows have the added presence of vulva beneath the anus. Lastly, for the pointers in choosing cattle breeds to raise, choose imported cattle breed. They gain weight faster with less food than pure native animals. The imported breed is easier to raise and fatten than the native one. Here are most common cattle breeds in Asia, America, and Europe. And now let us explore the most common cattle breeds in Asia, America, and Europe. The first one is Philippine cattle. The most popular of this type is the Batanga strain. They are usually red in color, but some are white and others are black. They belong to the dual purpose type because local farmers usually use them as work animals and later sell them for beef. This is how it looks like. The second one we have, American Brahman. They are considered the best among the imported breeds of commercial beef cattle in the country. They are identified through their humps over their shoulders. 
They are grayish white in color with very loose dewlap extending between the four legs with large drooping ears and horns that are curved upward and backward. This is how it looks like. This is how it looks like. Nalor, they are active and strong, so they are good working animals. Their body is cylindrical in shape and medium in length. These animals have humps but are not as prominent as those of the American Brahman. They also have a dewlap. This is how it looks like. Another most common cattle breeds is Santa Gertrudis. They are a good source of beef. Like the American Brahman, they can adapt to the hot climate of the Philippines. Their bodies are deep, wide, and thick. Their colors range in shades of red. This is how it looks like. Another most common cattle breeds is Red Sindhi. They originated from Pakistan. They are known for humps. They are docile and are considered a dual purpose breed. This is how it looks like. Lastly, for the most common cattle breeds is Thar Parker. They are grayish or white in color with horns that are small. They have long bodies. They are considered as their breed of cattle and can be used as working animals. This is how it looks like. 